Okay, hi. Hello, everyone. So I am super stoked. I have one of my most favorite people on today. I have Barbie the Welder Parsons. Yes, a woman welder. She's badass. She's insane. <laughs> I love her. Um, Barbie, tell tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I know I can go on and on about you, but I want you to tell, <laughs> tell the audience about yourself. Um, today, I have been an uh, artist, a metal sculptor, full-time for five years. Uh, but 12 years ago, when I got the idea to be a metal sculptor, I was living on welfare. I was in an unhappy marriage, and I was just, like, depressed and miserable. But I saw, during this time, I saw the woman welding these giant angel wings in the movie Castaway, starring Tom Hanks. And seeing her weld this art, it just spoke to my soul. And even though I had no background in art, no background in business, no background in welding, um, I knew right then and there in that 15 second clip that I was meant to be a metal sculptor. Um, I ended up saving up money. It took me nine months to save up money to go to school to learn to weld. I did a six month BOCES course and then learned enough in welding and fabrication to pass a welding test and get hired at a custom fabrication shop. Uh, I worked there five years to learn the art of welding and fabrication. And during that time, I fixed my credit, divorced my husband, bought a house for the garage, and started saving up to purchase welders and tools for my home. Uh, it was about three and a half years into working there, and I started working part-time here teaching myself how to create art and full-time at work uh, and then uh, after five years and earning my journeyman in iron plate and sheet metal i quit my job to go full-time as a metal sculptor that that's fantastic i love that you put the time in there because so many both people think oh she just did this overnight <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not an overnight process nothing that we do is an overnight process so obviously this is something you chose did you have any difficulties that you had to work through? I mean, obviously you had to fix your credit. Um, welding is a very male dominated, dominated um, industry. How, how did you deal with that? Cause you don't, and I'm not going to judge or put, uh, <laughs> I know actually I'll be honest. I will, because you're very delicate. You're very dainty. <laughs> well, you think of, I think of welders, I think of these big burly guys who have to have all this massive equipment and you were so cute and little and it's like, <laughs> how the hell does she do this? So did you, and that's me as a woman projecting onto you, how did, how did guys, you know, how did you deal with the guys who see you and think, oh, you're a girl, you can't weld? Um, I was very, very lucky that, and I say lucky because not everyone has my experience, but in school, my teacher was amazing. Uh, I was the only woman, but the guys were very accepting. I was never treated any different being a woman. I was also the smallest person in class, but was able to, you know, able to do everything. Um, when I started my job at Cameron Manufacturing and Design, it's a local custom fab shop. Uh, there was one other woman that was working there as a welder, and she actually taught me how to TIG weld. She's an amazing TIG welder. Uh, but in that shop, I didn't have any sexism. There was no problems with it. People saw my work ethic and respected me for it. And I go in there, and I'll you know do whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, to carry around, like to move the bottles, like the the gas the gas bottles, like up onto your welder. I would have to ask to have them do that because they weigh just about as much as I do. I can get them down. It's easy to get them down. Getting them back up part is a challenge, but I was very lucky and did not deal with sexism. I thought that the welding industry was different uh, in that there wasn't sexism in it. Uh, just to do a little quick back up, I was an auto mechanic for seven years out of high school and I dealt with nothing but sexism in auto mechanics. And so, I assumed I would get the same thing in welding, but I'm just like, screw it. I am just going to, it's what I want and I'll do whatever it takes. Um, but it just, for me, it was different. Now I did meet women later on that, that 
that's not always the case and that some women have had sexism um, in male-dominated industries. Now, it's not everybody. It's sure as hell not everyone. The company I work in had 120 people, and I never heard anything or never dealt with anything. People were super supportive of me. And I just, I had this passion to learn and they saw it. And so, you know, like people took me under their wing and, and taught me. You know, I did, I, I will say like, I did get lucky, but it's also, it goes, it speaks to the men I was working with is that, you know, they're, uh, they just, they saw the work ethic and I didn't, I, I didn't get seen as a woman. I just saw it as a worker, which that's all I asked for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we, I think as, as women, we need to be able to support each other regardless of what we do. And if we can have the, the people around us, whether they're men or women, support us in, in that same way, it, it makes the job that we're doing or the business that we're building or you know the project that we're working on so much easier to, to do. So yes. I, I love that, that you had that positive environment to work in. So, you bootstrapped it pretty much. I mean, you, you worked and worked on your projects and worked on honing your craft as you continued working full time, correct? I did. I like that. Okay. So how long did it take before you felt successful in, <laughs> in your business and being an artist? Um, four years of working full time, seven days a week. Uh, most days I worked 14 to 16 hour days and I've worked 18 hour days plenty. Um, four years of that. Last summer, um, I really started feeling a lot more stable where I could breathe a little bit um, and get a little bit more picky with the commissions that I'm taking and was able to start saying no to people that um, the, the projects that weren't uh, setting my, my soul on fire, I was able to say no. So that for me, four years full time, and I would love to know how many thousands of hours <laughs> that was, but, um, and it's just problem solving, just problem solving and problem solving to, to get to that point. Uh, I have no training in business, no training in art. And so there was a lot of, there was a lot of failure in those four years in order to get to where it was like I could finally start being able to breathe. A lot of honesty that I didn't want to be honest about, like where I was failing. And, and failing as in not knowing what you needed to know or failing as in making, making mistakes. And, and to me, if obviously if you're feeling successful now, I'm thinking that you took those failures, turned them into lessons, and said, oh, okay, yeah. this didn't work. This is what I need to work. So sometimes acknowledging that, is that what you mean? And in, in acknowledging that truth that you didn't understand that, that took knowledge and, and being okay with? It was being on, like the failures were like, I'm working my ass off and I'm not selling anything. And so as an artist, that's a failure because you need to sell in order to earn, to survive, to thrive, and to continue making things that you love. And so when I say failure is I've never failed because I've never stopped trying, but there are deep lessons that, you know, looking at myself without beating myself up and saying, where are you weak? Where can you strengthen, you know, what is the one thing that you could work on today that's going to like, give you the most, um, like to bring you forward the farthest, you know, what's something you could do today? And for me to start looking at myself and just saying, and I actually learned this early on, I was very lucky about nine months into uh, being full time, I was failing magnificently, I had $35 left in the bank. And I had, I had maybe sold, I think, $65 worth of stuff in that nine months. Um, $65, not $650. <laughs> so I, I call it, I was failing magnificently at a high rate of speed at that point. And what saved me was my willingness to say, 
to, to sit down with myself and say, what is working? What is not working? What can you do right now to change this? And so realizing that I suck at sales and by suck at sales is I wasn't selling at all. And I didn't, I'm not a dumb person, but I just didn't realize. And like, it sounds stupid saying it, but I didn't know I had to sell stuff. I just, I don't even know what I thought, but it was just like, I just knew I needed to create the art. And everything else after that was an afterthought. I mean, it wasn't even an afterthought. I didn't think about it. I just was making art and I had stuff piling up. And every now and then I'd post a picture on Facebook. I'm like, oh, you know, I made this. But looking at myself honestly and saying, where are you weakest? Where can you strengthen yourself without beating myself up and just going to work? Like absolutely going to work. And so every single time... I've had a failure, I call them stepping stones. And so like, I've taken my failures, I've made them into my stepping stones and I've used these stepping stones to get to the success. That's spectacular. I love, I love that you had the insight to do that. I really do, so many of us. And honestly, I mean, I'm definitely, I've done it. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have done it, who, who get so caught up in the quagmire of, I've, as you said, I failed magnificently <laughs> and, and don't take the time to analyze what we're doing and taking those failures and using them as stepping stones that you, as you said, um, I'd love to talk to you more about that. And we can do that at a later date on another podcast, another YouTube, but because I think that that's something that we really could dive really deep in as far as, you know, how you came to that realization and all that kind of stuff. Um, thank you for mentioning that. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, you have written goals. Yes, I do. I have a lot of goals, but I, I have end game. So I have end game. I have six things that are deeply important to me and everything that I do in my daily business, whether I'm in my shop, whether I'm making videos, uh, writing a book, regardless of what I'm doing, those are the goals that are in my mind. Like everything I do goes to support those. So technically our goals, but these are, I have, like, one, of, one of my main, main things is I want to donate millions of dollars of art supplies to after school programs in areas with like um, low, in, low income areas, because that's what I came from. And so I want to put art into these communities, hoping that that art will help enhance their lives like it has with mine. And whether it does or not, I, there's no control over that, but I wanna pay artists to go in and teach the kids and so the artists thrive. I can help the artists thrive by paying them. I can help the kids. And so like, that's one of the things. So like when I get tired and I'm, I'm grinding something and my arm's tired, I'm just like, just, just push through it because if you don't, then there's kids out in El Cairo. But if you don't, like, those kids are gonna go without play or they're gonna go out with you know, paint brushes or like, you need to do that. So I have like these massive goals like that, but then I have, and I say massive, I have small, like huge goals. I have other huge <laughs> goals that are going to get me to that. So yes, goals, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> do, you, do you have them written down? I mean, do you have like, a, do you have a vision board? Do you have something that, oh yeah, that shows you I mean, if I'm a visual person, so I'm thinking, okay, I need to have something in front of me, but I know that not everybody's like that. So are you someone who has to have it in front of you or is it somebody that, you know, are you somebody that's, that as long as you keep, you know, telling yourself in your mind, okay, I've got it. Like you said, you know, kids aren't going to have clay. They aren't going to have a paintbrush. Does that work enough to motivate you or do you need to have that visual as well? I am visual as well. I have a three foot by four foot vision board in my bedroom that I have. Uh, stuff written down on that my my mission and that I have those six things that are deeply important to me and that's something I see on a daily basis like several times a day and it's stuff that I yeah definitely love to visualize and so like as an artist that's my gut like I wake up and it's there and constantly front of mind yeah I love that that and that's that I know for for me is is very important to have those those pictures and that image so that I don't forget where I'm working. You know, you sometimes you get so engrossed in what you're doing and what's going on in your world, you forget where you're headed. So I, I love that. What kind of stuff do you do for, for growth, for personal development, self-development? 
I read a lot of books and I watch videos on YouTube uh, and I look for people through like LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, any of them. Um, I don't follow anyone unless they have positive stuff on their page. I'm very, um, I'm very, very particular and I guard, I guard my world uh, ferociously with what comes into my, my head. I don't let people complain around me. Um, but as far as like the growth and stuff, I definitely like YouTube and books. I have like a small little library of um, books that I've read again and again. And I'm always on the lookout for new books to help me. I love that. Do you have, uh, uh, sorry, I had a brain fart. I forgot what I was going to ask you. I was like, and, and you know what's bad is the questions are right there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> I had a thought in between, pop in. I, like, I do that all the time. You never have to apologize for it. Literally in the middle of a conversation, I'll tell you, like, I missed the entire conversation. Can you please repeat that? Because I was building a sculpture in my head. Yeah, I, I, I do the same thing. I, and that's, that's one of the great things of talking with an artist is that you completely understand, oh, I've got it. I've got this, this picture in my head that I just painted <laughs> right here while we were talking. So completely understood. Oh my God. So question was, are you a planner? So do you, you know, write all your stuff down that you need to have done? Or are you more of a go with the flow? And as, as you've got a project or a couple projects that you're working on, you just, you know, get them set out and laid out and work on them as you go. Or do you have it structured? And this is how the things are. Yeah. Structured. I like, you know, for an artist, I am structured on a lot of stuff. And I think that kind of like, the left brain, right brain thing is like some people are creative and some people are with the numbers and I do both. Um, I have a list of like, whether it's either for the day or for the week, it's things that I need to accomplish that's gonna make me say, like if I accomplish these four things, I feel really good about myself today. And that's something for me is I'm fiercely driven and I, you know, and like sometimes stuff will come up where I'm like, I'm going to go and do this, this, and this, and something else will come up and I'll deem that more important. So I'm not, I'm not like, you know, this can't change, but usually I like to have the direction. So I know where I'm going and I know what the most important thing for me to handle is, is going to move me forward the fastest. Perfect. I love that. Um, what kind of stuff do you do for fun? Because for me, welding <laughs> would be fun. I mean, that'd be like, I'm having fun all day long, so what more do I need? But, I mean, I know fishing. <laughs> I have actually been once this year. Yes, finally. So what other things? I mean, welding I know for you is fun, and that, that, that's some way for you to express yourself. But other than that, what other things do you like to do for fun? Traveling. Traveling is on the top of my list, and that's one of the things that... My goal is to have my art take me all over the world. Um, I've always wanted to travel and I've never been in a position to financially. And um, through my art over the last two years, um, I have gone amazing places. It's all been in the United States so far, uh, but I am so excited that I'm actually going to go out of the country next year but uh, I, I got my passport last year um with intention that i will travel the world and this year i get um i get an email from a company i've been working with for quite a while that they are going to send me to germany in order to go to uh, to promote them at a um at a trade show over there um so like the, the travel the opportunity to travel um, experiences and adventures like that's like art and like family art experiences and adventure like that's like that right there is just perfection for me. sunrises and sunsets in all different places that's uh, phenomenal I love that you want to travel there's so many people who are happy with where they where they are I want to stay here I don't want to go anywhere else the the ones who travel those are the people that speak to my soul. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's it. the, the, the adventure and just, I don't know, the world is so huge. And to think that, you know, I, I grew up in a very, very small town. We're very sheltered growing up as far as like 
what's out there. And when I started traveling, like I would go places and like, I have no idea what half the food is. I'm like, I thought Taco Bell was Mexican. Sorry, Taco Bell apparently is not. No. Like, that, like the things that you learn when you go to, you go to Arizona. I mean, what? <laughs> the lady almost fell off her chair laughing at me. I'm like, that's what I know. She's like, chai this guacamole. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, yeah, like I can't even look at Taco Bell anymore. I'm like, you, you lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> False oh, representation. <laughs> yeah, which I still love Taco Bell. I can't even lie. I love Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So do you have women in your life or women that you know of who inspire you? Absolutely. Um, my mom, first of all, who, my mom did some really amazing stuff. Like my mom is an artist and this is something I didn't really think about, but she's a stay at home mom. Um, she made my clothes when I was a kid. I mean, like who does this stuff, right? And then um, she actually was a cartoonist, like a professional cartoonist when I was really little. And this is back before, like, you know, emails and all that. And it's like she would create a cartoon and draw it and come up with the funny stuff. And then she would send it to all these different magazines, like Snail Mail sent it. Um, and she had a business where she would get checks in the mail from, from her art. And so for me, and, and we're talking, like, she had stuff in Playboy, don't judge. <laughs> she had stuff in Playboy. I was like, my mom is like the sweetest, most innocent lady ever, right? She's like the church lady from Saturday Night Live. And I'm like, literally got like cartoons of play. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, it's friends with the guy that um, writes Marmaduke, the cartoon Marmaduke. Like when my brother was born, the guy literally, I, I apologize because I don't remember his name, but like drew a picture of Marmaduke and says Marmaduke sends Grant a big smack. And it was like, his, you know, like kissy face with hearts. and. I mean, like my mom, back when it was really difficult to be an artist, was an artist. And so like, I just deep admiration for that. Like I remember sitting underneath her easel as a kid, like with I had like pillows and like I had a little fort under there. Like that was, you know, I just sit there and just like play around or whatever, and, like Barbie stuff. You know? Like all she's doing, like doing her art. Um, today, and my mom is still like, my biggest hero like I I'm just I'm stunned by what she did you know but I also have women that are um I've met some I've met and some I have not met through social media for me is a big big wealth of these badass women that are just crushing life they're just they're doing whatever they want and there's no uh, like the, the gender boundaries I think are coming down. This is just my opinion. I think they're coming down and a lot more women are seeing other women through social media, through the internet and everything else that uh, like one of the women I deeply look up to, she's a cover girl model and races motorcycles. I am just like, who are you? You're just amazing. The other friend is a monster truck driver of a woman that not only owns her own garage, uh, a six bay garage. And it's a nicest mechanic shop I've ever seen in my entire life and I was a mechanic for seven years I've been through a lot of shops but not only that but she also co-stars on a tv show I have another uh woman friend that is a, uh, a contractor uh in like in real life but also has a tv show where she does contractor stuff um there's just there's so many amazing women out there just totally crushing it that I just like I deeply admire they're living their truth every single day. And I love, I love that there are so many more women doing, not only doing jobs or doing, creating careers for themselves that are, that are outside of what most people would consider a woman's job. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but doing it amazingly well. And that's, honestly, that's one of the main reasons why I'm creating this channel and the, this podcast is because I want to share with more young women, my granddaughters, oh, yeah. it, honestly, anything, anything that you want to be, you can be, you know, and, and there was a time, and even it, for my generation, and I'm not that old, you know, 50 is not that old for, you know, having that 
that boundary come down and, and being able to do the things we want to do. I mean, when I look at you and you're a welder, I'm like, Oh, that's freaking, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just, it just is. I know that there, are, I, I've been in that industry. So I know working in construction, there are not very many women out there who are doing that side of, of the, of the laborer side. It's, it's been such a male dominated industry oh, yeah. and automobiles and you know, the, all these things that, that those lines are blurring and it's phenomenal to watch. It's absolutely phenomenal to watch. Um, I have a couple of questions that I didn't send you. I don't care. I just, send it. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm a fly. <laughs> so earlier you were talking about books that you reread. What did, what are, what's your favorite book? You have a one or two favorite books that you'd like to share? Uh, I'm going to have to say my first favorite book is called uh, Rhinoceros Success by Scott Alexander. Um, this book is very special to me. It's literally like, I think like 80 some pages. It's a very short book. It has larger print and there's cartoons in it. Um, and it talks about being a rhinoceros in life, about charging ahead and getting what you want. Uh, it talks about having very thick skin so that like as you're charging through the jungle, that uh, the little prickers and stuff, it doesn't affect you. It just kind of, you just kind of brushed off. But the whole premise is about just being a rhinoceros. And the book is, it's smart, it's funny, it's a fast read, but there's so much truth in it. And the story behind the book, I've got, if you give me a minute, and like, to make a long story longer, <laughs> <laughs> to make a long story longer, um, the way I got the book and found out about the book was I was at a library book sale with my mom and dad. Very early on in my full-time metal sculptor career, um, and the books were 50 cents a piece, and I found two books and had to borrow a dollar from my mom and dad, no shit, to get the books. And this was one of the books, it just, it spoke to me, and I don't know what it was, but it spoke to me. I took it home and I read it, and I read it the second time, and then I'm a humbug, I, and this is an older book, and I want to say 80s-ish, don't quote me on this one. Um, I reached out to the author on Facebook and I thought, I just love this book so much. It's just, it really, it, 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 it was exactly what I needed and the universe said, Barty, your wish is my command. And so I just wanted to reach out to the author and tell him thank you that I was so grateful that he put in all his hard work to make that book happen because it really shifted my mindset. Um, and that book actually was the beginning of me on my path to self-improvement. Um, I reached out to the author. He wrote me back surprisingly and was just like, I, I don't know, for me, I'm just like, oh my God, an author, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is incredible. Um, he was a magnificent human being, is a magnificent human being, wrote me back and was just like so kind. Um, we've actually been friends ever since. Um, I've actually bought several of his books. Um, I asked him for signed copies. And then when I talk to people online, I send people signed copies of his book because everyone needs this. It's just, you know, it, it, like I said, my son who at the time was like 12, like I, he read it several times. It's just something that, because it's just such a fun read. Yeah, Rhinoceros Success by Scott, Scott Alexander. And the guy is just incredible. I'm, um, one of his friends actually, I made a, a rhinoceros sculpture, and one of his friends bought it. <laughs> it just, you know, like I make what speaks to me, and I was like, because of like that whole like becoming a rhino thing, it's one of my favorite sculptures that I've made that doesn't have wings. It's my favoriteest ever that doesn't have wings. <laughs> Most of them do have wings. Your dragons are just they do. so beautiful. Oh, thank so, you. I think I have an idea, but. Um, just to ask, what kind of a legacy do you want to leave? Oh, that's a great one. That's a great question. It is of utmost importance for me to teach people, to inspire people to thrive emotionally and financially because I know how soul crushing it is to not to. My main focus is kids and artists. 
it's entrepreneurs, but honestly, it's anybody. It's anybody who's willing to listen. Um, I went through deep depression, and that'll come out in my biography someday, like how very deep the depression was. Um, I went through hell, my own choices, and I'm very, very grateful for everything I've ever been through. But uh, not, like, we're just, just barely surviving. You know, single mom, two kids, um, no child support, um, just have had to just have had to survive for a long time. Art has changed everything for me. So to be able to take something I'm madly in love with, my art, um, it, it is of utmost importance that I, just, I inspire other people to follow their dreams and by now, not follow them, but really just like crush the crap out of them. Like just go live your dream and do whatever it takes as long as you're not hurting anyone else. That, you know, that, that, so, that, so that you can like, make choices that make you happy you know like if you are you're at a job and you're schlepping to work every day and you're not happy like i just want to inspire people to go and find their way go and find the stuff that really makes them happy but they had the thriving emotionally and financially like the legacy and like i'm like my plan is to do it mainly through my art and through art and like through my donations with art um, like the donations of art supplies, like that for me is, that for me is it. But I really do like that. But I told you like, I think huge. I don't think they think like really huge. Like my goal is like all that. But at the end of the day, like I really, I want people to remember my name. Like there's like Barbie was here. Like I want, you know, like that's my little corner of the world where you know, like making sculptures that make people feel. Uh, they look at it and like they, they feel the sadness and they look at it and they feel like hope or, you know, like, I do, I want that remembered thing. That's something that, um, the, the legacy is important to me. And like, I don't know what's gonna happen when I die. I have no idea. And I've had someone that I deeply admired die like recently and this woman was, one of my biggest inspirations. And she's here one day and she's gone the next. And it was very, very humbling. Because I knew she was an amazing human being, but like after she passed, I learned even more about her and like her foundations and what she did. And I'm just like, I need to move my ass because tomorrow, like I can go to walk out of my shop and trip and bash my hood open, I'll be gone. And it's just like, for me, it's, you know, I want to do the most good as I possibly can while I'm here. You know, affect as many people as I can. And, you know, because this woman that just passed, you know, because of her, I'm in the position I am today because I looked to her and was like, if she can do it, I can. And that's what I'm hoping to do for other people. Like, I'm proof that you can go from just soul crushing depression. Um, from being a single mom, from living in the projects, from being on welfare, like, from that, like, I mean, some of the stuff that I've accomplished, if you would have told me five years, I would have called you a liar. Most of the stuff that I've accomplished, if you would have told me five years ago that I would do that, I would have called you a liar. But now I've done it, and there's video of it, and there's proof that I've done it, and I want people to look at me and say, she can do it, and so can I. I think that's probably the legacy. More than anything else, more than anything else I just said, that right there, I want people to look at me and have hope that they can have a life that is beyond your wildest dreams. That's one of the reasons why I really wanted to interview you and do more follow-up interviews is because you, you are an inspiration. I mean, you are, even not knowing your whole story, you know, you, you inspire, you, bring hope to people who you know are i mean it's so many times that you you know i call you like ah, you know <laughs> <I'm back." laughs> and and you know even if i just send you a text and the, the world's falling apart you know and and just even a couple words or even you know a, a phrase it it we do that for each other but i i know that we both want to expand our reach and you know, you sharing your story and allowing people to 
to see that vulnerability and that authenticity and you 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 show that in your videos when you're on instagram and you're you know you're posting your stuff you know you show that through you know through your book you throw you know all of the things that you do you express yourself in such an authentic and beautiful way that i don't see any doubt i don't have any doubt in my heart that 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 you're gonna create a, a massive impact in a lot of a lot of women's lives and a lot of girls lives so i i admire you for, for being who you are and being true to yourself it takes a lot to be true to yourself i don't know how to be anyone else <laughs> I don't know how to be me. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm good at being me. Uh, and that's okay. And, <laughs> and sweet and adorable and, and badass. I mean, hell yeah, badass. Absolutely. So, so uh, that being said, what, what would you like to let, you know, other women, girls, late young ladies out there, what would you like them to know? What would what? I apologize. I didn't hear that. That's okay. What would you like other other women, you know, young girls, ladies, what would you like them to know? What's a message that you would like to, to leave them with? You can be, do, or have anything that you want. I think that in society, in the past, women have been brought up to be these Disney princesses that, with all due respect, I love Disney and I love Walt, I love his vision, but these women, with all due respect. Well, and women, I'm just looking at your shirt, you have Ariel on your shirt, which I is- I do, too. She's also, <laughs> she's got some tattoos. tattoos. <laughs> tattoo <of> Ariel. <laughs> that's why I was, that's why I was giggling, because it's like, it's so perfect. <laughs> Absolutely appropriate. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> But um, we're, we're brought up with these fairy princesses from Disney that are in need of rescue. And for whatever reason that that message is being put out, and I love Disney movies, I love Disney movies. But if you really look at it, all these Disney princesses need to be rescued and they're waiting for men to come and rescue them. And listen, you're not a Disney princess. You know, go and rescue your damn self. No one is coming for you. You know, go out and do stuff for yourself. Go out, and I'm not saying like, like this, not, like, I'm not saying men are trying to hold us down or anything else like that. It's the last thing in the world. You know, like, women and men need to coexist. We both need to, and men need to rescue their damn selves too. Stop being scared to go out and be a nurse. You know what I'm saying? Like, go be a nurse because you're good at it. Men get, uh, men get sexism too. And it's something that I don't think that we as women always think about. We're all like, oh, we're all us. And that's good. But I just think everybody in general just needs to understand that there's no one coming to rescue you. If you want a great life, if you want beautiful things, if you want to travel the world and adventure, then go do it. You know, find, find inspiration through people online if you don't have people in your life. Because... Not everyone is lucky enough to have like supportive families and everything else. Um, shut out all the noise. If people are being negative, get rid of them or at least distance yourself from them to a point. And I know it's hard with family, but we are so impressionable. And if we have all this negativity in our life all the time, we are, you just get inundated with it and the news is negative and this is negative and the neighbors complain about that. It just, it's like this energy that just kind of sucks your will to live. And I think that we're so used to all this negative, you don't always realize that you're not even, you know, you're, you're not in like this great place. And so by being very thoughtful about who and what you let into your life, but also understanding that no one is going to come and rescue you. You can have a life that is beyond your wildest dreams, but you have to go and do that for yourself. And listen, it's not going to happen overnight. It is a long process, especially like if you're like me or anywhere near like me, like being on welfare and being on government subsidized housing. I was working my funds off, but still couldn't afford to, you know, afford, afford the housing to put my kids and my family in. But I made a decision and it all started with that decision and everything else came from that. I decided that day that I'm going to be a metal sculptor. 
And I never once diverted from that decision. Everything I did from that moment on went and supported that decision. And I just, I had, everyone was like, you're batshit crazy. Um, you don't know art, you don't know this, but it was just like that decision, you know, put my ear pluggers on, like, you know, block everyone else out. I'm like, this is what I want for me. This is what I know will make me happy. And I know eventually it's going to help support my family. And I mean, like, I had no idea what it was going to grow into, but making a decision and cutting off all other options, but also being flexible in how it happens. So I didn't know how it was going to happen. I just knew it had to happen. But making the decision and being willing to do whatever it takes to go after it and then blocking the other people out. That's a, that's a short version of all that. <laughs> I appreciate you breaking it down, though. I do. I appreciate you taking it. You could have just said, block out the noise, block out the negativity, and get focused on what you want to do. But you expounding on that makes it more personal, makes it a lot easier for people to, to gravitate to because they're like, okay, look, I see Barbie. <laughs> Barbie, first off, tiny little thing, <laughs> badass welder. I mean, no, I mean, the first time I saw you, I, first off, amazing jacket. I still want it. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm not trading the jeans for the jacket. <laughs> In one of our next interviews, you're going to have to wear the jacket and I'm going to have to wear the jeans and we'll have to like, you know, show them and be like that. There we go. <laughs> but then when you, when you told me what you did, I was like, oh yeah, kindred soul. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, you, you, you know, you being open and, and willing to tell me what you do and me being open and willing to, to, you know, tell you what I do and accept, you know, each other. We need a lot more women who are supporting each other. And, you know, we don't need to be tearing each other down. We need to be building each other up. And, and I am so grateful to be calling you a friend. And Aww. sister, and serious, it's, it's an amazing, an amazing I can't Strong even women just... raise other women up. We do. We do, absolutely. And it's, just, it's about finding your tribe. It's about finding finding the people, the kindred spirits. And sometimes it's a challenge because it's not, like, it's not always a thing to have women that, for whatever reason, we're fiercely competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like, you know, because of dealing with the sexism growing up, I hated being a woman. And I hated women and yeah. it was nothing to do with y'all. It was all about me. And it was like the fact that I hated women because I hated myself. Yep. Um, as I've come to grow my, as I've grown to love myself through my art and through like what I've been through, I actually felt, you know, like by loving myself, I, I, I love other women. And I find women that are just like, they're, like yourself, like they're strong, they're out there raising each other up. They're just beautiful human beings and they're just so badass. And it just, I feel that in my experience, the women who are tearing each other down are the women who don't love themselves. And only because of my experience and understanding what I went through, I got bullied and then like with the sexism and just everything, it just, you know, one thing led to another, but it's just like finding, finding women that I loved and respected, like they were badass and they're out doing stuff. I'm just like, what? And it's like starting to see it. But then realizing eventually it was like, you can't give what you don't have. So it's like, how can you, you know, be kind to someone if you're not even being kind to yourself? So the whole, the whole thing is just like figuring out, figure out where the women are that like you really respect and just staying with them you know or, or find it whether like and if you can't find them in person go find them online because there's a lot of times that I put in so many hours here I don't leave my house and so I'm not around a lot of people a lot of times and so I like when I'm freaking out I gotta reach out to people and I'm just like I'm freaking out I could use some help right now kick me in the butt and tell me that everything's gonna be okay or whatever but like having that communication but having the friends and the people I can reach out to is it is priceless. Yeah, I think I think that is going to be another one of our well, another one of our interviews and talks talk about because you know just get on here and just talk about you know self love and through self love being able to love and appreciate other women because I really think that that is imperative. So one last question: What's one question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Oh, um, 
What are your goals in the next five years? Mm. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, so answer the question. I have an idea what it might be, but. <laughs> um, I am in the process of creating a television show that is going to, I know, right? Um, I'm batshit crazy for doing it, but someone else before me did it and they figured it out and if they can, I can too. I'm going to create a television show that is a, um, a reality show yeah. that showcases artists and showcases the welding industry in the most magnificent light. It's going to help artists get their art seen. It's going to help them sell art and the winner is going to win money. Um, I'm going to be right now as it stands, I'm working on being the executive producer and the hostess for it. And I'm giving myself six months how to six months to design this show to put it all on paper to create a sizzle reel and um, get funding for it because I'm gonna I'm probably gonna bootstrap this sucker also because I have this vision for it that it has to do the things that it has to do and I'm I don't want to give up control on that because if someone comes in and they're the executive producers, they can change it and create a bunch of drama and it's just not what I'm looking for. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I've got a book that I'm going to start writing um, next week, which will be my fourth book. I'm going to buy a big girl shop. Um, I'm still working after five years. I'm still working out of a one car garage that is 12 foot by 23 foot. Um, it is literally a one car garage and people, I tell people all the time, I've done videos of it and people still show up and they're like, are you kidding me? No, it's I've, a one car garage. No, I, I, I agree. I've seen videos of it and I think it can't possibly, that can't be all of it. And I, oh, it <laughs> I like, oh, it is, it really is. It looks so much bigger, you know, because you just sort of show sections of it and you think, oh, so there's this section, this section, and this section. If I put them all together, it's huge. But in reality, it's, in reality, it's not. In my mind, it is. Hey, in my mind, it is also. I have like this giant fabrication shop in my mind, but it uh, you don't need a giant, you don't need big area to do big things. And I've done some really massive things from this little tiny shop, but. It's just a matter of time. You can't work this hard for this long and make the right decisions without it having eventually pay off. No, so the big no. girl shop, um, and I'm going to move to Tennessee because it's warmer there. I'm in New York now. Um, I want Tennessee. I want the seasons, but I want the warmer version of the seasons. So that's, that's the main goal. And I'm moving into public art, um, going from the smaller pieces that I've been doing, um, uh, anywhere from about eight inches tall up to about three foot has been my normal range. There's only been a couple that have been, I, I've had a six foot tall one, then one that's nine, nine, nine and a half foot tall guitar I made. Um, the Phoenix that's behind me, uh, she is my push into public art uh, because I can't draw. And I don't have like this big portfolio of stuff. I basically just have a website and uh, a lot of Instagram. Um, I make stuff so that I can show clients that this is what I'm capable of doing. And so this sculpture here is going to be, it'll actually be my third public sculpture, but this one is just going to be something that I'm going to make in the hopes of promoting this in a way so that people go, this is what I want. And so my goal is for um, like Vegas hotels and places like that that have like the, you know, like the big areas to have something. And she's going to have fire on her because I'm going to learn how to do that too. So that's one of the areas that I want to also uh, go into. So, uh, and there's going to be so many more things coming along that I don't even know are coming along yet. Because the last five years was freaking magnificent. <laughs> I never would have guessed. So all those things, yes, plus a whole bunch of more stuff that I have no idea what's coming down the pipe. It's coming. Just being open to the universe to allow for whatever's coming through. Oh, yeah. yes. Set it my way. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Barbie, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, I. I want to continue. We're going to have a couple of the conversations at a later time on the two, at least two different topics that we talked about, you know, self-esteem and, and everything. But I, 
thank you so much. I really appreciate you being a part of this. Um, I greatly admire what you do and you're an absolute inspiration. Thank you very, very much for doing this. Oh, thank you so much for taking your time to talk. And it is an absolute honor to have you interview me. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, I might figure out how to <laughs> lost my mouse. <laughs> thank you, Marie. Thank you.